All right, I am making a sour candy resin skateboard. That's a hell of a title. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, these wrappers are pretty much empty. Uh, the reason for this is because I want this to be a functional skateboard and I feel like air pockets inside, they will cause weakness in some areas and I just do not want that. So I emptied out most of the wrappers and then I unwrapped the other candies. A lot of people in the comments of like TikTok and IG are always like, oh, the candy's going to go bad and blah, 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 blah. Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I hid my kid's Halloween candy one time in the garage and I found it like four years later. And um, that candy still looked the same. So I don't go ahead. Like I don't use chocolates or anything like that. But I feel like we have so many preservatives in our stuff that like it really doesn't. It's not going to show a difference in the candies that I choose to use. All right. So here after getting the layout. I am going through and adding like smaller candies like nerds and the little clusters and things like that and just filling in the spaces and I feel like this ties everything together. I actually went up to the store and bought uh, some tropical nerds because they have other colors and I felt like the pink and purple just weren't bright enough. So I went ahead and added some of these in there. All right. So if you follow me, you know that I love clear pores like that is my jam right there. So I actually use Promise Epoxy, the casting resin, for all of my clear pores. Uh, you can get all my promo codes down below. Everything that I use in this build will be linked below. The skateboard mold, all the tools and the products and all of that stuff will be linked below. Except for the candy. I just buy that at the, um, at the store up on the corner. So, All right, so... This is actually being done in layers. I believe I did two layers for this and that covered up all of the candies. I like a layer underneath and above because I don't want to be sanding candy. Like I just don't, that's not good. <laughs> that's not going to be good for my festool sander. All right, so this is the demolding process. All right, so when I move the mold, you can actually see on the bottom of it, I mark out where the trucks are going to go and where I have to screw through and I try to avoid those places with candy the best that I can. Now I don't mind a nerd here and there but I don't want like a full sucker right there because I feel like that's going to make a weak spot as well. All right so I always take a deburring tool. Uh, when you pour a casting resin there's going to be shrinkage and it's going to be sharp. And a lot of people tell me to skip this step because I'm using a router and a sander anyways. But the reality is that sometimes I don't get to the next step until the next day or the day after that sometimes. And if my kids want to come in the shop, they're going to be touching everything. We've got five kids and well, <laughs> it's a candy skateboard. They're going to want to touch it. And I just like to be safe. I don't want anybody cutting their hands or their fingers, their little fingers or anything like that. So I always use a deburring tool. I don't want to cut my own hands. <laughs> like I've had enough of that. All right. So here is where I'm going to round over my edges. And I am using a half inch round over bit on this palm router. A lot of people ask me what this tool is and surprisingly I, I thought everybody knew what these tools were but uh this is a palm router so this is like my plunge router but just handheld like small one handheld <laughs> anyways all right so this is the perfect um size for when you hit the top and the bottom it just creates this really really nice rounded edge that meets right in the middle and i try to keep my board's thickness just right so that way they meet right where I want them to. All right, so this is me doing the other side of the board and I get a lot of lack for this. If you ever notice, I always do this outside and I always start with a clean yard. I don't leave this crap in my yard, but a lot of people come on my page and like to talk crap. So <laughs> anyways, all right, so this is so satisfying to me. I like to slow these um, videos down, but I'm not gonna put you through that. All right, so after this, you're going to sand everything down. And I saw a few air pockets underneath this board. So I'm using a Dremel with these little, like, 
they have these little mesh wheels on them and I'll link them below. They come in like four different grits and I'm using that to be able to penetrate the bag so that way I can push resin in there and just in case there's any air pockets because like I said, I want this to be fully functional and I don't want any weak spots or unstable spots. So I'm just using a razor blade knife to get into the areas that I need and a drill so that way I can puncture into that Skittles bag right there. Um, and then I'm going to use a syringe. I get boxes of syringes off of um, Amazon. Okay, so <laughs> this is very surprising. So you know, usually I don't give a damn about a vacuum pump or the chamber or anything like that but realistically i am pushing resin into these bags and into these air pockets and i'm not going to have any way for the bubbles to come out so i want crystal clear resin to go in uh this is the first time i've ever used one and i'm not sure that i'll ever have to use another one but i got this off amazon for less than 100 bucks and i thought that was a steal just in case i ever needed in my shop any other times so this thing actually worked really really easy and it was rather cool because it was set up in like five minutes. All right, so here I am just pushing. I did two holes. I did one right there and then one a little bit over. So that way when I push resin in here, the air can come out of the other hole. And this is just something that is going to allow it to go in a lot easier. Otherwise, um, you're going to have a lot of pressure in there and the air is going to have to come out where you're putting the resin in and it's just going to be a, it's going to be a mess. All right. So I am also filling up the other areas in this board and yeah, that's it. So, you know, like I said, resin shrinks and I'm not going back over it with more resin. Instead, I'm going to use something faster and this is CA glue. So as soon as you put the glue in, or on and then you spray that activator it is dry like you don't have to wait for 24 hours or 48 hours or however long it takes the resin to cure all right so i am using star bond ca glue and i have other videos on on the ca glues and the stuff that i use um i do have a 10 percent off promo code for them it will be linked down below um, I just like this route because it's so fast and you don't got to wait and I'm very impatient. <laughs> so, all right, when I start off sanding, I actually start at about 150 or 180 and then I go up to 220 and this just knocks down any inconsistencies and just makes a generally smooth surface. Clean everything up with 91% isopropyl alcohol. And the reason that I do that is because it dries really fast and it wipes off any oils that you have on your fingers. So on both sides of this board, I do a tabletop resin. I don't ever like casting resin to be my final coat on anything just because I don't feel like it has the durability that an actual countertop or tabletop resin is going to have. That has your heat resistance, your UV resistance, like all of those things. And I just really don't like a casting resin to be my finishing coat. So I'm going to flood coat the top and bottom of this thing. And if you don't know how to do a flood coat, I have so many videos on how to get a perfect finish. All right, so once you got your top coat on, you're going to get your drips off. And then I like to tape the part that's already been resined so that way I don't have to sand any drips off of that and I just use a thick painter's tape so it's got to be thicker than the width of the board so that way the drips don't go underneath it and I just put it as close as I can to the bottom and I actually do two layers over the sides because I do put my branding on the sides of my boards. And um, it's just vinyl, so I want that extra layer of the tabletop resin over top of it. So this is actually, to me, the most satisfying part of the build. And yeah, look at that guitar. I'm doing that tutorial next. Um, I use a 1 8 inch trowel to make sure this resin is gonna self-level. And self-leveling resin self-levels at one-eighth of an inch. So it's our job to get it there. After that, you're going to scuff it up with 220 and add the ultimate top coat. Now, this is said to, you can take a set of keys to this within 24 hours of using it. And this is from Stone Coat Countertops. 
I will link this down below. I use this on all of my boards and I've actually created a new method to add my grip. So I'm actually adding my grip right into that right there. Um, this is the way I find center to add my trucks onto my boards. Um, I just use painter's tape and then I mark halfway through the board and then I use a square edge to connect the dots basically and that's how I get my trucks on there. It's pretty easy. I can do a full video on it if you guys want to see it, but it's pretty self-explanatory. I'll definitely do it though if you guys like if if I need to go into further depth for this. Um, that marker right there is everything. So that's called the reach marker. And I use that when I'm attaching my trucks or if I'm doing like table legs or anything like that. It's got a long skinny neck so that way it can reach inside of like the hard to reach spaces. When I was doing my wall storage for my slabs, um, I know I needed this. And anytime I do a skateboard, I also need it. All right, so after you got your sparts, your sparts, <laughs> after you got your spots marked up, then I take a five millimeter drill and I drill all of the holes all the way through. And I do this after I do all of my finished coats and everything like that. So, yeah, this is like, like I don't know, I keep, I, I want to say that every everything that I do is like the most satisfying part because I love watching the drill go through this like I love watching the little spirals come off of the stuff and stuff like that is so cool to me all right so what do you guys think about this board like would you make a board like this yourself would you ride a board like this like people always think that these boards oh you can't ride it oh it's gonna melt oh blah 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 um the resin that I use it's good for up to like 475 degrees. Like you can take hot pans out of the oven and set them on your countertops. Like these boards are everything. All right, so I'm going to take the time right here to ask if you're getting something out of this video. If you like this kind of content, I'd appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Share if you want to. If not, that's cool too. Um... It takes a lot to make these videos, man. I've been going hard on this video for like five days, and that doesn't include the two weeks that it took to make the skateboard as well. So, all right. So I use a countersink to make sure that the screws aren't, they're like below level of the surface because I don't want anybody's feet or shoes or anything catching on the screws. So just if you're making one of these, just make sure your screws are at least flush or under flush um, with your deck, okay? All right, so I got these trucks and wheels off of Amazon. Um, I pretty much get all of them from there. Uh, so this is the board. What do you guys think? Yeah, look at the little smiley faces. I did those with the runts. All right, like, follow, subscribe, share. I appreciate you guys, and thank you for watching my build. Look at that shit. Ah, it's so cool.